Here's the content warnings for today's episode. Includes dysphoria, being misgendered, gender-based violence, and mental health. Genderful would like to acknowledge the indigenous peoples and unceded lands that the producers, hosts, and guests live and have dwelt upon. Today, we honor the Coast Salish, Duwamish. We honor the elders, the human, plant, and animal ancestors of these lands and celebrate the living descendants of these peoples. May all beings tend these lands for the goodness of the next seven generations and beyond. Meowdy folks, welcome to Genderful, a talk show interviewing gender diverse folks about their special interests. The name of our show celebrates that gender expansiveness is wonderful. Hi, I'm Gender Master, and my pronouns are they, them. Hi, I'm Atlas of Phoenix, and my pronouns are also they, them. The focus of our show is to interview trans, non-binary, agender, and gender diverse people regarding their special interests, passion projects, and resources for the gender diverse community. We want our audience to know that this show is hosted by two folks who also identify as non-binary, transmasculine, neurodivergent, and disabled with the passion for telling trans stories. We invite you to remember that we are whole people with robust lives, friendships, challenges, and successes. We love and are loved, and we are delighted to share these stories with you. As always, we kindly remind our listeners that no person is a monolith of their identities. Your identities can change over time and are valid every step of the way. And if you think you're gender diverse, you are gender diverse. There are no social or medical prerequisites to be included in the community. Welcome to Genderful episode 80. Can you believe we made it this far, chat? Oh my gosh. Um, this week, our guest is Angel Patterson, who uses they, them pronouns. And we're chatting about um, their nonprofit work with the Lavender Rights Project. I first learned of Angel because of this really cool um, trans BIPOC comedy event during Pride last year, 2022. And it's so cool to finally like meet you and chat with you, Angel. Uh, welcome to Genderful. Yay. Um, so I also want to acknowledge while we're live recording this on February 20th, 2023, um, it's three whole special days all at the same time. Um, so it's Transmasculine Pride and Visibility Day. This day is a day that was established to commemorate the ENAHC and Contro Nacion de Omens Trans, or the National Meeting of Trans Men, organized by IBRAT, which is the Instituto Brasileiro de Transmasculidades, or the Brazilian Institute of Transmasculinities, uh, which first took place on February 20th, 2015. So we just wanted to throw in that little bit of little factoid for you all. Um, thank you, Juice Text, for collecting that info and sharing it with us in the Discord server today so I could share it on stream. Really, Juice just makes me look good constantly, y'all. It's where I'm so great. I'm so glad Juice is around. <laughs> Helps with all this stuff. Um, so it's also a romantic spectrum week. Um, there's even a website about it. If folks want to check that out, Aero, AROSPECweek.org, AROSPECweek.org. And uh, Angel, you were telling me it's World Social Justice Day today. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, I found it through a Google search, but like I found the other two days, I also looked up what today was. Um, yeah. And yeah, World Social Justice Day. So I was like, that's, that's very fitting that we're doing this today and that I'm yeah. here. Yeah, 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 I agree. So I love this. Yay, you're being double celebrated, Transmask and Arrow. Yay, good job. It's a big day. I love day. that so much. It is a big day. Um, so before I even get into our super cool questions, do you want to tell people about the the comedy event that I just mentioned? Because I just I want them to hear about it. It's so cool that you did that. I would I would love to, because that honestly, it's my baby and yeah. I get to I get to birth it again this year. It's oh my awesome. gosh. Um, so this is, yeah, this is, this is like exclusive information. Um, but really? last, but last year I got to produce this really, um, awesome black trans comedy showcase, um, yeah. that was Lavender Rights Project's big pride fundraiser. And really what we did was we had Molten Decadence as our incredible, fabulous drag queen host. Um, and we had three black trans comedians that were all local. Um, so we had Mix Dahlia Bell, we had Chocolate the Entertainer, and Mitch Mitchell, um, and we were at Northwest Film Forum, um, and it was right before all the events and stuff at Seattle Pride, so 
it was like a really full week, but it was just such a great night. So much community came out. Um, and we just, we had a great time. Like the comedy was amazing. It was top notch. And the reason that we even did the show was directly in response to uh, just very terrible things happening in the media with certain comedians that I don't mm -hmm. feel are mentioning, um, just saying all kinds of out-of-pocket things. Um, and so instead of just, you know, traditional methods of, you know, protesting and things like that, which are, which are great. Don't get me wrong. Love that. Take to the streets. But I wanted to focus what LRP was doing um, and center it around joy, you know, wow. because we're, trans folks were funnier. We're, you we know, are. like <laughs> we totally anything, are. <laughs> anything that comedians have said was, it was, it was a waste. And so I said, we're going to, we're going to take up space and we are going to do our own comedy show and better. And that's what we did. And that's what we are going to continue to do is focus on black trans joy and laughter. And yeah, we're, we're coming back this year again. So be on the lookout for that. Um, it was great. We did it in person and there's a virtual live stream. So anybody anywhere can watch this and join in on the fun and watch us clap back at all the things that are constantly just happening to us every day. And we just make a joke out of it because let's just be happy. So that is it. That is my baby. I love yeah. that. And I, I get to share that with everybody. So, oh man, trans, trans joy is like one of my favorite forms of resistance to be honest. <laughs> Honestly. And that's, and that's, that's, that's my so favorite. Good. That's my favorite too. It's just, it's just us being happy and living life. And if folks want to be mad about it, they stay mad. So yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. I'm, gonna about it. I'm sorry. I'm just going to be happy. I'm smiling. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for the, for the space to share that. You're welcome. Of course. My honor. Um, so, all right. Um, that's so wonderful. I, I'm going to ask you now the questions that I usually ask all my guests towards the beginning. Um, what are some things you can trace back to your youth that indicated you might be gender diverse one day? We like to have sort of, I like to sort of have my guests map a pathway of how you got from the beginning of your life to now so when trans people watch this later, they hear our paths of realization and success. It's it like gives a roadmap to people coming later, which is why I always ask people. Um, yeah. Anyways, go ahead. I actually, I actually really love this question because there's there's always one thing that I think back to, and it's like I I have this picture of me that my family has, and it was this shirt that I wore that had elbow pads in it. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, it's just like that, like specific core memory is just like, yeah, something, something about that picture and this shirt with these elbow pads that was just like, it wasn't like, it wasn't anything like super feminine. And I just, it made me feel so comfortable. And I was like, I felt really masculine. I was like, yeah, this is it. So I would say that was like the, the thing in my youth. And then uh, when I when I knew that I was like really gender diverse, like after we'll we'll get into this, I think in one of the the later questions that I I proposed, but uh, it was actually um, Trans Day of Visibility, and I mm -hmm. I truly love Trans Day of Visibility, and I had just come back from spring break in New York, and it was seeing everyone on like social media posting for Trans Day of Visibility, and I felt left out and I was like this feeling of like being left out because like I'm like coming to terms with myself I was like oh and it finally clicked for me and I was I thought back to that picture of me with this shirt that had like built-in elbow pads and I'm like that younger me is saying I want to be a part of this so I think mm. I think yeah that's like when I when I trace it back it's yeah it's that shirt that's so, that's so great. I love those like moments of, of like trans joy and like euphoria and, oh, it's so fun. And it all just, and it all just clicked and it was just like, it was a, it was, a, it was an emotional journey, but yeah, I think, yeah, going back that. Um, so, so obviously something has happened from then to now because you've gone from wearing elbow patch outfit to having a very handsome beard today. Um, so can you tell us more about how your relationship to gender has evolved over time? Like, how did you get from that awakening to being the person you are today? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, that was, uh, I, I feel like my relationship with gender has, is ever evolving to be, to be quite honest. Um, I, I feel like I went through many stages of my relationship with gender also due to a lot of societal pressures. Um, and so I, when I think back to that photo with the, the elbow pads, um, I feel like I, I had a, I had a tomboy phase, but I was, I was still woman identifying. Um, and at, throughout school, like grade school and things like that, I was, I was definitely playing into societal norms, um, and, and things like that and presenting as, as, cis, as a cisgender female. Um, and then it wasn't until I really left home and was able to fully express myself um, freely mm -hmm. uh, that I, I really started to figure out who I was. And I feel like one of the things that was um, that was truly defining for me was also, it was also cutting my hair. Mm. Uh, that was oh, that was such that was such a, an awakening moment for me was once once the hair was cut, then I felt like I I could truly see myself. So I I do consider myself trans masculine non-binary that is how i identify mm -hmm. um, and there are certain elements in me um that still hold on to my feminine energies um as well as my masculine energy so i like to i like to consider gender a very fluid concept for me mm -hmm. and my relationship is with it and its evolution over time is just however I feel comfortable um, in that day and yeah. presenting it as myself. And I, I think I'm the most comfortable with myself that I've ever been. Um, and that's, that's solely because I, I feel like I'm in a safe enough space that I can express myself however I feel comfortable and not feel judged for it. And I feel like that is, a, that is an incredible privilege to recognize. Um, and I think in the work that I do, I, I want that for, for everyone. I feel right. like I got, but I feel like I, I feel like I also touched a lot of really good points. But I feel like I got to it. No, your your answer was wonderful. I love hearing it. Um, my sweet never kitty has wandered onto the keyboard. Hi. <laughs> so you might see me holding her instead of changing the scenes around, which is fine. Um, so let me switch topics and talk more about the Lavender Rights Project specifically. How did you get into nonprofit work? Yeah, um, I I started off. Uh, it was when I was at San Jose State. Um, I had the pleasure of working with another really great nonprofit called uh, Project More Foundation, um, and they were they were really instrumental in me getting into sort of the work that I do now. Um, so now I'm in fundraising, um, but before when I started off with those folks, I was uh, doing events with them. Um, in the Bay Area, and they were really, they were really great, very uplifting for me and my work. Um, then I, I went on to do some other events work um, with some other nonprofits um, in California. Um, and in between jobs, I was, I was doing just random gigs. I was working um, like in vaccines in LA. Um, I was doing um, like other just event work. Um, and it was all very corporate yeah. and I realized that, uh, you know, there, there's some stability there. It's cool, you know, to each their own. Um, however, after having been with project more foundation and which was a, which was a LGBTQ nonprofit, um, after having been in that line of work, being disconnected from it, um, and sort of being like the only, like pretty much the token of any workplace being black and gender diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to get back to work that was very LGBTQ focused mm -hmm. uh, and, and working with folks that are like me that share similar values yeah. um, rather than just having to be like in a corporate setting and joining like an affinity group um, mm -hmm. or, you know, trying to find other folks that were like me. So I was like, I'm going to seek out a comfortable work environment for myself 
um, and then finding Lavender Rides Project. So yeah, um, I, I really enjoy nonprofit work um, because I, I, I find myself the most fulfilled there um, because mm. the corporate side is very profit focused and, and that's great again to each their own. But however, with non the nonprofit work that I'm doing, I'm, I'm directly uplifting the folks that are like me and my community. So I, I feel like I hit a really great cross intersection. Um, yeah. So that's, that's where I will be staying. I love that. Um, I, now I'm, I have a curious just about your personal trajectory. Um, you've mentioned living in different places and I wonder if you moved because you got the job with Lavender Rights Project or if you moved and then found that after the fact. And I don't know if that, if you want to talk about that on stream, it's okay if you don't, but I'm just oh, yeah. curious about it. Yeah, so absolutely. So I, and, and I, I will give my an embarrassing admission that I love to give um, for this question, but I actually, uh, I knew that I wanted to move to Seattle for a very long time. Um, mm -hmm. So in my job search, I found Lavender Rides Project and luckily I got the job and was able to move up here with the job. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I knew that Seattle was the destination because like I mentioned, I love the rain. Mm -hmm. um, but also, um, I... I, my embarrassing admission is I love Twilight and I, you know, team, team Edward. Um, and <laughs> I, Hashtag. You know, yeah. <laughs> Growing up, I, my sister put me onto the Twilight books and, you know, being in Southern California, no rain ever. So I was just whisked away into this fantasy land of evergreen trees and rain and, you know, just Washington state as a whole. And, I, I visited Seattle twice before I moved up here and I was like, yeah, that's, that's really the goal. And yeah. I want to, I came to be the main character. I came to be Bella and I'm living out my twilight dreams and, <laughs> and I get to, and I get to work in a really great job that I love. So it's, uh, it's, it's truly a, a, a privilege and I, I love it. That's wonderful. I, I'm glad that you can find like gratitude for where you are. Like, I feel like, especially with all of the stuff happening politically and trans rights being challenged, like on a global and national scale, especially here in the U.S., like um, there's so many people who are thinking about how can I flee, how can I leave and go somewhere else. Um, and there have definitely been times in my life where I've had those thoughts myself too. Um, and so I love hearing from you that, like instead of being caught up in that, or maybe in addition, I don't know, it doesn't have to be an, an only one of those, but, but finding that like gratitude for place and location and environment. And like, I don't know, there's some, there's some mindfulness in that, that I really admire and appreciate. It, you know, and it, it's, it's a very much so a conscious effort because there, there are some differences that, you know, there, that are very specific here to Washington. There are some things that I didn't experience in California Mm -hmm. Um, I have, I have said experienced here in Washington that we will, we won't have to get into. Um, but I think, uh, it's, it's my personal journey and, uh, you know, regardless of those things, there are very many exterior factors that could impede on my joy and not mm -hmm. to say that I'm, I'm ignorant to the things that are, are happening in our world that are directly affecting us and trans folks. Um, but I, I think, yeah, there's a, there's a there's daily gratitude that I like to have just for the the space that I'm in. Like right now, I just, I, I look out and I just, I see Seattle and it's just like, I, I, it's an accomplishment for me personally, um, just to see myself in this place that like younger angel was like, you know, I had on like the, the iPod nano, I would just have like a bunch of saved photos of like the city skyline. And I would just dream and be like one day, like one day I'm going to be there. And it's just like, I, I get to sit here and it's just like, it's not one day anymore, like it's today. And I, I think that applies to a lot of aspects in a lot of our lives um, is just like, you know, imagining this one day. And then when that day happens, it's like, wow, it's not one day anymore. Like it happened. And there's, there's gratification in that. Yeah. Celebrating the dreams that you have already manifested. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I love that. Oh, this is so fun. Um, okay. Can you tell us a little bit, what are the goals of the Lavender Rights Project? Yes, uh, our goals are Black trans liberation. Like 
plain and simple. Um, our three pillars of work are economic justice, housing justice, and gender-based violence prevention. Mm -hmm. um, so to get into that, really, with our with our economic justice, we envision a world um, where Black trans folks uh, really have the the autonomy um, and the financial stability um, to make their own decisions, to be you know fiscally stable, things like that. Um, with our housing justice, you know, we uh, envision a world where Black trans folks have access to safe and secure housing. Um, and with gender-based violence prevention, it's, you know, it's really as simple as uh, we hear in the news, a lot of our Black trans uh, sisters are, you know, violence, are being affected by violence every day. And it's very, it's very hard to hear about. So we want to sort of, what's the wording that I'm looking for? We want, um, we're trying to avoid trigger warnings and, and saying things um you can you can just say a content warning and then say it it's um, okay we're, we're allowed to speak plainly about like speaking truth to power and resisting um oppression it's okay right. um so we're trying to we're trying to interrupt um the institutions um that inflict violence on our yeah. uh, on black trans women and femmes so i think yeah that's the that's the wording that i was a cab for. exactly exactly yeah. Defund the police. Absolutely, yeah. De <laughs> and, I'll uh, say it so you don't have to. Defund the police. <laughs> Abolish the police. Absolutely. All the way gone. No yeah. more of that. <laughs> yeah. So I get, um, I get so mad when I see the pride police cars. It's like, what are you doing? Why? Are, why are you here? I know that. I know that there. Yeah, with uh, Tacoma Pride last year, there were some big issues with the police being present, but. Uh, and then just the the way that there's a precinct uh, and for folks in Seattle, there's a there's a precinct right in Capitol Hill, which is like the like the gay district. Yeah, of Seattle. it's just like and it's like a block away from the Black Lives Matter painting on the road. Yeah, it's like it's what, like a permanent institution now. It's yeah, no cops at Pride. That's right. Um, yeah. You know, this is absolutely an aside and it's my show, so I get to do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my. So my wife sometimes helps with some of the the trans pride security and um and trans pride at least which is sometimes it's an event that happens around the same time as all the other pride events but sometimes it's its own deal a different month um but at least the trans pride that I've been to um it's very intentionally like they roll their own security because they don't want the cops there. And so they've had to have interactions with the city and talk about like, no, like we're going to do our own thing. And so, you know, I actually like at a different point during the, the tenure of this talk show, I've been able to interview the person who runs security for transport. And I don't think that was our topic at all. I don't even know if it came up on stream, but we've talked about it after the fact. And so like, it's just cool to know that, yeah, we've absolutely got like, like um folks who are experienced with um either martial arts or similar who are trans themselves who are protecting our own communities Absolutely. because we get it in a way that the cops aren't going to and like you know we're ha we're handling it within ourselves we're not we're not leaving it to people with guns and uh institutional racism as their weapons in their belt to come after us so yeah, we we actually we've um, that was one of the things we were super proud about for uh, the comedy showcase last year. Um, we actually did we for security purposes, we used uh, members of the Black Elephant Party um, that are very trans competent, um, very great folks. Um, and they came and they provided security for us. And we've, we've continued to use them for our mm -hmm. events um, yeah. and working, instead of working with the police. So we yeah, the Black Elephant Party been riding for us it's been great but yeah taking care we can provide our own security please no cops at pride no cops um so we did have a question in the chat about does uh angel have any socials that folks can support in addition to the lavender rights project um so i just posted angel's instagram in the chat it's master angel b and then the number seven on instagram if you'd like to go drop a follow you can um before we before we get rolling on whatever our next question is do you want to mention the event that's happening in like three days 
so that I folks sure, that are here can make a mental note. I sure do. And I would love if folks came out and joined. Uh, one of the things uh, that I'm putting on this week is a virtual trivia night. Um, it's going to be super fun. It's sort of our, uh, our Black History Month uh, events that we're doing. So it's going to be all kinds of questions about Black history, her history, their history, queer history. Um, it's going to have some pop culture stuff, some uh, historically relevant stuff. Uh, and it's it's super interactive. I'm really excited for the platform that I'm going to be using because folks can, um, it'll be through Zoom. You'll be able to join. Um, and then there's like a QR code that you can scan and then you can answer the trivia questions directly on your phone. Um, and it's going to be super interactive. It'll be myself. Um, and my right brain cell, my development director, Randy Ford, is going to be a super fun night. So from 6 to 7.30 uh, Pacific time. Um, and I believe we shared a link to RSVP for it. Um, and that's just, it's going to be a super fun night and super easy. Uh, folks can come hang out. Um, and if folks are watching this after it gets posted on YouTube, um, this is something that we try to do regularly. Um, so there will be more opportunities for things like this um, and trivia nights and just virtual meet and greets with myself and other LRP staff. So there's a, there's a lot coming up for us this year. It's a very busy year for us and I'm very, I'm very excited. There'll be lots of opportunities, um, to hang out with me and other LRP staff. So very available to you all. Awesome. Angel, I just want to say thank you for making your events either hybrid or online so that like disabled people, people who are not living in Seattle, like people who are still practicing more, uh, more rigorous COVID safety, like all have access to these really cool events that you're putting on. I'm like, so delighted um, that you're doing all of this. It's such hard work. Yeah, it, it is. It's an extra step to take, but it's, it's worth it because I, I know that a lot of folks really like the, the COVID is still a thing. And I want to make sure that, you know, folks just, and folks that just can't leave their house just in general, like I want folks to have access to us and all the things that we do. Um, and I don't want anybody to feel excluded if something's in person or whatever. Like I, I want us to have all have equal access to the things that LRP is doing and be in the know. And again, like I said, have access to LRP folks. So, yeah. Um, we're getting in all caps from Butch Twink. Yes, thank you for the accessibility. Right, right on, right on. <laughs> There's other, we've got, we've got some, some non-binary BIPOC folks in the chat excited that this is on the internet. Yes, yes. We, uh, we're, honestly, LRP is very, it, it, one of the more forward workplaces that I've ever been in. Like we are very disability justice conscious. Like we are, we are all about folks access needs and making sure that we are mindful and folks are, everybody's comfortable. That's, that's so, what we care about. It's so wonderful and radical. I love that so much, Angel. Um, okay, let me find my next question for you. What is the most empowering thing about working at Lavender Race Project? I love this one. Um, for me, honestly, it's if anybody has taken a look at our website and seen our staff, uh, it's the fact that I am I, I, I've never even worked in a workplace where there were more than maybe three other black folks um, on staff. And so now, even though we're a smaller org, um, the entire org, um, aside from two to three people, is Black trans folks. Mm -hmm. um, and our leadership is Black trans women, um, and that is, it, it's incredibly inspiring, um, and just, they're wonderful leaders. Um, our executive director, Jalen Scott, she inspires me so much. Um, she's so, she's so thoughtful, she's so funny, um, and she just, she, she really knows how to lead. Um, I really feel um, empowered in my work and the decisions that I make on behalf of the org. Um, there's such an investment in my, my personal development and my professional development. Um, and I've, I've never had that anywhere else. Um, and so I, I really, I really feel lucky, um, to be working at Lavender Rise Project, um, and just, and have people that are like me. And it's, it's, I, I feel like I, I don't have to hold back any part of myself. Um, and I don't feel like I'm, um, you know, that, that I'm acting. I feel like I'm, I'm 100% myself with these folks and 100% accepted. And it's, it's, it's really lucky. 
So I, I feel really empowered to do my work. Um, I came to the organization um, with a bunch of experience in event planning. Um, mm -hmm. And they they saw something in me um, and they said, you could be great at fundraising. Mm -hmm. And I, I've not done that before, but I could try. And I'm they're investing in me and I'm I'm learning to do this job and I'm I'm not to toot my own horn. I feel like I'm good at it. Um, I feel like there's a lot of, uh, you know, skills that can be merged and married together. Um, and I, I feel really good about the work that I'm doing. So I, I, I feel really uplifted in my position. Yeah. Um, I pulled up in the, the about and I actually recognize Nikita Oliver and I have no idea why. I don't know if they like ran for like a political office at one point and that's why I like saw news about it or if we've like run into each other elsewhere, but that's what a cool, what a cool staff. Like, you know, as far as I can tell, there's maybe two white people and they're both in support roles. They're not in leadership roles, which is how an organization like this should be. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Um, our, 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 um, our, our non-black folks on staff are, are, they're incredible. They're incredible. And, um, it, it, another empowering thing is that it truly is like a, like a big family. Like we really, we get together and we, um, like over the, over the holidays, it was my first, um, it was my first holiday, like out of state, um, like back in, in December. And so like, I was feeling, a I I was feeling a little homesick and, um, we like, we all got together, um, at the office and we had um we had like a little potluck and we like put on some holiday movies we did like a like a white elephant type of gift thing and it was it, it was so um it was so interesting how it worked out because we all ended up getting gifts that were really like really suited for each of us mm. after, after even doing like the oh i'm gonna take that gift and like all that it just it was so interesting how it worked out but we all we have such a good time together um and it's yeah it really we really care about each other and it really is really special. Yeah. Well, this next question is rather related to what we're discussing. How does it feel to work in a completely trans and non-binary and gender diverse workspace? Yeah, I feel like we were kind of, we were kind of already in this one, but it just, it feels really, really good. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, there's, there's, there's so many like things that like, that we can talk about that yes, like exactly like, like that i think that's like the like the like one of the better things is like you know when like when i was in like those corporate workplaces or like it was like i was the i was the token person like there were there were things that like i couldn't just say freely yeah. and now like in this space it's just like it's we're we're all coming from similar experiences like it's just you know this is the norm for us so it's not it's not taboo in the workplace and it's it's there's we're having deeper conversations we're talking political context we're talking social context you know there's there's things that we can just that we can talk about um that we all just that we all just get and it's and it's okay and it it feels it feels really good i really yeah. i really yeah um you know i also work in a very queer and trans workspace. <laughs> I think I think we have one token cis person who is still pansexual and queer and disabled. So it's like you fit in, you fit in, you know, you know, and like dating multiple trans people. So it's like mm, we all decided that you're one of ours, even if you're cis. It's okay. <laughs> Get it by proxy. Get it by proxy. Um, it's magical, and we have we can make like jokes that other people like. Like maybe cis head people just wouldn't have the context for. So like the inside jokes aren't as inside, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. like we all have yeah. the same memes. It's fine. Yes. The, <laughs> oh, the memes, the memes in the work chats. <laughs> Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Trying to, <laughs> to explain that to somebody. Yeah. Just wouldn't, wouldn't hit the same, but it's, it's, it's very unique and it's very, it's very open and accepting. And it's just like, it's, it feels, it feels very affirming. It feels affirming. That's, that's what it boils down to. It feels very affirming. 
Yeah. And I feel like it, I feel like this was really good for me on my journey because I, there was also a part of me that was like in when I was in California, like I felt I started my I started my transition in 2020, mm. um, and it, so it was it was very isolating. Mm. Like it was very it was very isolating, and I knew maybe like I I had followed other trans folks on social media. And I had one other trans friend in real life that I would see occasionally, um, but it just it felt it felt very isolating, um, yeah. uh, like starting my transition. And it was I was it was great, but it was like I didn't really have anyone to talk to it about, like and you know share similar experiences. Um, and so now it's just like. I, I felt like I was making up for lost time because it's just like now there's just so many things and it's just like, oh my gosh, you experienced that too. And it's just like, we really all were just living the same life. Like that's mm-hmm. so, so fascinating. But it's, yeah, it's super affirming that now like I have, I also have this space to share and be affirmed. And yeah, it's really awesome. Yeah. One of the people in chat is saying, oof, yeah, I started my transition in 2020 as well. Um, so my HRT anniversary is actually next month, middle of next month, March 11th, and it'll be my two years on T. I've been out as non-binary since like 2017, but my HRT anniversary is next month, less than less than a month from now. Um, and it, what, so during the pre-show, you mentioned that you're coming up on two years as well. So I was like, oh, well, this is, this year is this year's three for me. So I'm at, so I'm in. Oh, my, nice. I'm in my second year. So yeah. So I started. Nice. Uh, I, October 16th, 2020. And that was, yeah. So, and I told you, me and my puppy, me and my, my little, uh, little mini dachshund, Nova, have the, the same birthday. So, yeah. You are, you are a newfound uh, Pisces then. You're yeah. a, born, a born again Pisces. I think I'm a, uh, I think I'm a born again Scorpio. The born again. I love that. I'm a quadruple Leo also. Whoa. Whoa! I know I know people. That's my special skill. <laughs> so I like I like meet people and befriend them, and it's fun and great. <laughs> I, you got you got to be a Leo to to host the show. <laughs> yeah, it helps. I I I'm often the the main extrovert in my friend group, and I just I, I get a bunch of introverts together. But then they all like each other, so they're like, okay, I guess this is okay. <laughs> Hey, you've got a good judge of character. That's a good, that's a good <laughs> character. It's my service to the community. <laughs> um, your... Is there anything else you wanted to add about your coming out experience? So you kind of talked about it, but I don't know if you want to add anything. It came in stages. Yeah. It really did. It really came in stages. And I, I, oh, uh, it's all, it was, it was very much that stereotypical, um, like the, when the, parents are like it's just a phase um little did they know that it was not just a phase it was multiple phases so they were almost they were almost on to something so i you know going back when i think about it i'm like i went through my different phases of coming out to like get get to home and it was almost like i i i I feel like that's a that's a terrible analogy but i'm like i went through several bases to get to home plate which is here but it was like i was like a masculine lesbian and then like then i was like non-binary and then i was like trans mask non-binary i want to transition and i was like that feels right but it was like i i went through multiple phases to to find home and that's phases as well and I feel like, and I feel like that's why like a gender feels so fluid to me because I feel mm. like I'm, I'm in a comfortable phase now, but I feel like it's, it's, it's ebbing and flowing. Like I, I love to put on a wig. Like I will, nice. I will serve it. I'll do it. But there's, yeah, like there's different, there's different parts of me. Like it's, it's so it's, it's expressive. Like gender is an, an expression and it's like, for me coming out was just like being comfortable with that like and breaking away from the gender binary um gosh that's i love i love that you described the phases because i feel like um when i when i was first coming out one of the things that happened after i started testosterone would be more specific 
after I started injectable testosterone, um, my, my sexuality changed. And I had a lot of feelings about it. So I'd been a lesbian for a really long time. And now I'm more sort of pansexual, gay man flavored, uh, married to a trans woman who is fantastic. Um, and polyamorous because it's still gay. <laughs> like, ugh, what do we do about it? Um, and like, I hadn't heard people talking about this, about how your sexuality can change, like starting HRT. And so, I don't know, I, f I now have brought it up in multiple episodes of Genderful because I feel like it's important to just, you know, I don't think everyone's going to listen to every single episode. Some people will. Thank you for listening to all of them, superstars. But, um, you know, for those who just catch one or two or the, the person that their friend was on and that's the one episode they ever listened to, um, you know, it's... It just feels important to mention, like, your sexuality can go through phases, too, just like your gender identity does. And it doesn't mean that, like, I wasn't a lesbian back then. Like, I was. That was where my brain was at. And now I literally have meddled with my brain chemistry because of HRT. And so it's like, now my brain chemistry is different. <laughs> Honestly, thank you for mentioning that, because that is that is absolutely true. Like... I'm like, I'm like recalling back like my younger years. I was like, okay, like high school me, like had boyfriends and like in the like freshman, sophomore year, like was still having boyfriends. And then like junior, senior year, like I was like, oh, okay, I'm having girlfriends. And then it was like, there was this weird phase in college where I was like, we're by, we're by, we're in the middle. And mm -hmm. then it was just like, yeah, once I like, once I started my injections, I was like, Oh, I just love everybody. Like, this is just, it's, it's an everybody thing. Cause I'm just like, I feel like I'm coming into myself and I feel like I can see my, now that I see myself more clearly, I see others more clearly. And I'm just a love. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Love. Holly, like all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is, I really appreciate that. Well, and let me throw in another complicating factor. There's also possibly there might be differences between who we are romantically attracted to and who we are sexually attracted to. Like, like, like one may be more broad reaching than another. Like there might be like pan romantic, but like homosexual, right? Like loving everyone, but only want to have a sex with a certain sub group of everyone that is romantically attractive. And so it's like figuring that out and being really clear with partners. Like, hey, I'm interested in a romantic connection or I'm interested in a romantic and a sexual connection or only a sexual connection and like figuring out those pieces. And so like just knowing that these pieces are all pieces um, is so important for like just communication and like setting um, like hopes for our connections so that everyone's kind of on the same page so then we don't have resentment and weird feelings about it later. So anyway, um yeah, trans energy saying I am bisexual, aromantic, and I love that about me. There you go. You have brought up a wonderful topic for me to take to therapy. Yes. I can't <laughs> wait to take this to my therapist. <laughs> oh, <my goodness>. Breakthrough. <laughs> Breakthroughs I love. Yeah. Well, and I mean, sometimes it can be intimidating to have those conversations, especially if you're like already in the middle of relationships with people. Like, it's like, oh no. But like I don't know. It's also really freeing. And for me, the the important piece is I try to pick people to uh, date or be involved with romantically or sexually who are good at communicating. Like if, if we're both good at communicating and we genuinely care about the other person, everything else is going to get figured out, even if it's hard or feels weird or it's uncomfortable. Like, of course it is. It's like a growing awakening. Like those, like hatching is hard. It's, you're literally breaking out of your paradigm to a new paradigm. And so that is challenging, but it can be done with love and trust and like, you know, just the, the belief that the best outcome is going to be on the other side of those conversations. You're going to have to have me back for another episode. Cause then we could just do a, a whole episode on relationships and communication. <laughs> have me back for that. You know, honestly, I think I need to start organizing like panel conversations with past guests. It's like we've interviewed everyone one on one and it's just, like find a pile. Maybe we should do that for like pride stuff. I need mm. to write that idea down right now. Absolutely. Pride panels, past guests. Okay. Write it down. Yeah. Put a pin in that. Absolutely. <laughs> Set a reminder. Uh, 
Let's see, one day, two hours. There we go. All right. Now I'll get back to it tomorrow when I'm on stream. Um, like Jeopardy, having a tournament of champions episode. <laughs> totally, Ness. I love that. That would be fun. I love it so much. Okay. I don't, where are we? Um, here's another great question that's, I don't know how related it is, but it's the next question. What does Black trans liberation look like to you, Angel? Oh, I, I love this question. I love all the questions. I love any questions. We're having fun. Um, so but great, yeah. We, we talk about this question a lot. Um, and everybody, everybody in the org always has a very beautiful answer. Um, and my, my answer really, um, is just like, it's, it's a world that I, where I envision that we, we don't have to look at a new year and think how many days can we go before, um, we lose a black trans woman. Mm. Uh, how how can we as a society um have black trans folks um i i want to see i want to see black trans folks grow old um yes i i want to see us um in more leadership roles mm -hmm. i want to see us um you know owning land mm -hmm. you know owning businesses um really just living our lives like unapologetically unbothered um, that's, that's what black trans liberation looks like for me. And just, I, I want my people to be happy. That's what Absolutely. I want. Happy, safe, got all the things they need. Like that's, that's what that looks like for me. Yeah. As an autistic, trans, ADHD, disabled person, I never thought I would own land. Not once, not ever. And, um, I, turns out I was friends with someone who is like this great queer realtor who, whose like purpose, like mission at work is to help queer families get their first home. Like, like, so this, it's, my friend is like an anti-realtor, right? It's not about getting the biggest sale, making the biggest cut of money, like all that more greedy, like monetary stuff. It's about like, how can we scrap and fight to get like polyamorous queer families? Like, like let's get a household of seven queers who are not romantically engaged, but like want to buy a place together, like co-op housing, like let's figure it out. And so like, yeah, my, I can, I can send you more info offline, but like, yeah, my, my realtor friend is super cool and like has a, a teammate that they work together and, um, and we bought our first house last April. It was like world changing for me. It's, it's such a relief because like my rent's not going to go up. My mortgage payment is going to be the same for 30 years. And so as inflation rises and people get, you know, raises on their income and whatever, that number is going to stay the same. So yeah, it's a little steep right now, but in 10 years, everyone else is going to be paying more rent for less property than me. And I'm going to be in the same spot with I'll be in a better financial position. And, you know, it's when you're, when you're paying off a mortgage, there comes a day when you've done it and you're done. It's that, it's that gratification moment. Yeah. I, yeah, but please, please send that person's information my way. Cause that is, that is the dream. I, I almost got out of apartment living. I almost did. I just re-signed my lease. But that is that has been my dream to uh, honestly just and it's, for me right now it's it's space. So yeah. myself and my partner and my two dogs like mm -hmm. in, you know it's it's a it's a cute place. Don't get me wrong, but it's it's the the space. Like I I need to expand. I need room to breathe. Um, and it's just like what we're paying here um, is just it's not, it's not adding up. And now we just, we just re-signed because there was, there was to move out right now, the, the cost to move out was even just too much. So yeah. just to re is just the easiest thing. And then we'll just deal with that increase. But it's, yeah, I, I love the idea of, of owning land and having the large polyamorous families living on land. That is a, yeah. that is. Yeah. It's amazing. And, you know, how cool would it be to have more, like, queer people in the countryside? <laughs> it would make me feel better about going to the countryside. <laughs> like, like, what's out in the country? Uh, a bunch of queer uh, folks living their lives happy. 
you know, instead of, instead yeah. of there now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I am super excited about just generally, especially black trans and indigenous trans people or indigenous two spirit people, whichever identity they prefer, um, owning land, right. It's so, it's so important. And I don't know, for me, but when it was first happening, I, I really debated about if I was going to share about it on social media because I had all this like survivor's guilt, right? Of like, you know, I I'm one of the lucky ones. Like I'm white and I married a software engineer who's also trans, but like it's weird to be middle class now. I used to be working class before I met my wife. And that I like I was not gold digging, like she found me. And I was like, Oh <laughs> hi. I'm just doing my thing over here. Um, but like, I don't know. I mean, and I think I talked about this when I was a genderful guest, but part of the reason that I work so hard at this job is because I also want that liberation for trans people, BIPOC people, disabled people, neurodivergent people. Like, I just want all of our needs to be getting met, like consistently without, is it going to happen or not? Like, no, just, can we just consistently have people's needs getting met? That's my dream. I want that. <laughs> Please. That's what we're asking for. Yeah. If they thought it was, if they thought it was something different. Yeah. We're not asking for power over. We're just asking for like equal treatment and like well, equitable treatment. I'll put it that way. Because it has not been equitable for so long that equal does not equal equity. No, absolutely not. Right. Yeah. So um, okay. I think I have maybe two more questions for you. And your this this question you just answered, it's so fun because our guest last week had a cloud query that was kind of along these lines. And people have started answering it on the YouTube post. We'll post it on socials and they get almost no traction, but we just just this week, I think we finally figured out how to post it on YouTube and we got two answers. And I'm like, oh, this is so cool. And now we're like actually getting answers. So if you're listening to this later and you want to see the cloud queries, like check out the YouTube channel. If you're if you're on the podcast version, you can go to the, the YouTube channel version. Um it's on Gender Meowster channel, but it is the genderful playlist on Gender Meowster channel. Um, and oh, it's so fun to have these conversations with folks. So it's one way that the audience and us can keep interacting after the live recording. Um, so Angel, is there is there anything else that we missed about Lavender Rights Project that you'd like to make sure that you say? Yes. Uh this isn't this isn't a a um a plug. For people to donate i truly love sharing about this work if folks feel inclined to donate we love that just as much um but we are truly doing some great work we've got some great things coming up this year um we are steps closer um to actually getting our house so that way we can actually house um black tra black trans women and femmes um prioritizing housing them um, we are doing some, some really great legal work. Um, and we've, we've got all kinds of things coming up. We're working on a minimum basic income structure, um, just really, really great things that we've got coming up. So please follow us on social media at Lavender Rights Project on Instagram. Uh, and then I believe it's just Lavender Rights Project on Facebook. Um, that's how we'll be communicating. If you go on any of those pages, I'm quite sure you'll see videos and pictures of, of me and our staff um, and just what we're up to. So please stay up to date with us. Um, we're, we're doing some really great work um, and we, we appreciate all the support um, and just being, I appreciate just being able to talk about our work um, here with you all. So um, I, I truly, uh, I feel lucky to be a part of this organization um, and how wonderful this organization is. So that's it's really, it's a really wonderful org. And um, y'all, you can get cool emails that the angels, do you write the emails? I do. I write them personally. So it, it is, it is personal communication from me. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the ideas for the posts and stuff, those are, I'm also part of the social media team. So a lot of the, a lot of the stuff you're saying is, is directly me. So. so, and that's, that's part of how we met is I got emails for you. And I was like, who is this person? I keep getting these emails from like, it's my it's my direct it's really cool <laughs> it's my direct email but we've got we've got a great team behind it uh amy hart helps out uh she's a, she's a lot of the the power behind the creation of the posts uh my development director randy ford um she is my uh my right brain cell like i said so yeah. we're we're a, we're a great team 
Yeah. Um, so out to them. I love all of that. So I just dropped the links in the chat for those here with us live. They will also all be in the resources section of the um, published posts. So you can find them in the show notes if you're listening to this later. Um, so, okay, I like to ask every guest this because it's a nice couple, two questions to end on. Can you share an experience with gender euphoria? Yes. Um, I think, hmm, I have, a, I have a couple, but I think uh, one of my first ones that I had was probably I, um, it was right, it was right before I moved up here. Um, and I, I had just had, um, top surgery and I went to the, I, I went to Las Vegas and I went to, I went to a pool party and I, I went to, I was at the pool for the first time shirtless and I just felt like, wow, like I'm really doing that. Like, and it was just like, it was just such a, it was such a moment. Like it, it was one of those gratification moments again, because it was like something that I had always thought about. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to go to the pool one day, you know, and just, you know, just be out like this. And then it was finally that moment. And so I, I think, um, I mean, a grand prize me, like just thinking about like all of the, all of the moments that like I envisioned growing up and then just like watching adult me get these things like that mm -hmm. is, that's, that's, that's really cool to like, think about it like that. And I, I feel like Yes, I have. I, I, I practice uh, gratitude for the things that I have, but I feel like a lot of the times I, I appreciate moments like this because then I, I actually I get to sit and acknowledge that like I am accomplishing goals that I set out for myself. Um, yeah. So I think that that was a real moment of euphoria um, that I had for myself. That's so that's so wonderful. Chad is saying, I love this for you, Angel, and totally get that topless joy feeling. Ah, mm -hmm. and oh, that's giving me tingles. Just yeah. like oh. Chad is enthusiastic. In the, in, the, in the summer, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a menace because the, the shirts, the button down shirts are very, they're very, they're very low, very low buttons. The, the um, buttons just, yeah, the, like, the, like each month a new one gets undone. Yeah, see, right now it's January, so this is yeah, this so is a conservative button. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> get, get closer. Beautiful summers here in the state of Washington. Very beautiful. And so, yeah, the buttons, they just never met them. Never met them. <laughs> I don't know how to button a shirt. I don't. I, what? <laughs> it's so wonderful. I love that so much. All right. Um, my last question is, what would you like to make sure folks know about your perspective on uh, gender and non-binary trans and gender diverse issues. Hmm. I feel like there's several ways that I want to approach this one because this is um. There's a, there's a lot there's a lot in this one. Um, yeah. Oh, there's so much I want to say. The first thing that's coming to mind is like mm, it, it, issues is a, is an interesting choice of word because um, we don't have issues. It's the it's the people that don't understand that have issues. Um, but I feel like my, my perspective on these things is, um, I feel like the way that I've, I've portrayed myself, um, and just really, just really been myself, um, throughout this entire interview has, has been a very, a very happy go lucky person. Um, and so I feel like my, my perspective on the issues is, um, there, for me as a person it is it is a lot to process the negativity mm -hmm. and i i think in the, the things that i do one of the reasons why i made the comedy show is because I, I wanted to focus on joy um i i have a very hard time um when i when i hear about negative things i have a very hard time sitting in that and staying in a negative place so when i when i hear about these these medical bans um and these the, this legislation um that is a, an attack on trans bodies everywhere um i i have a really hard time being angry for long not to say that i that i don't get angry but being angry for long because i i like to turn that i i, I like to turn things into a positive so mm -hmm. when i when i when i hear about these things um maybe it's a defense mechanism 
that's built into me already. But my, my perspective is we, we truly aren't going anywhere. They can, they can do all these things. They can say all these things, but it's literally, we're not going anywhere. Um, I, there was a, I think there was an article that came out last year um, that I really loved. Um, and it, I don't remember what year it said or what exactly it said, but it was something along the lines of like, in a few years, there's going to be more um, like LGBTQ people than straight people mm-hmm. in, in just like a certain amount of years. And I was like, that sounds like a dream. That sounds like a dream. So that really, that really just affirmed like my level of positivity and my perspective. That's just like, you know, these things that they're trying, like they're, they are not going to last forever. These things that they're, they're trying to do uh, are, are temporary. They're causing real harm right now as we speak, but they, they will not last because we are not going anywhere. So I try and keep my mindset positive and it also helps that the work that i'm doing is is fighting for those things so i feel Mm -hmm. like i have an an interesting perspective in that sense because i'm like i i can see the real results of our work um and how it's it's helping folks so i i get to my perspective gets to be affirmed in that sense yeah it's so thank you for sharing that i i love that that we both get to take joy in our jobs working for trans liberation. I love so it. It's so good. Like I just wake up and I feel like I'm doing something that's like making a difference in the world. It's great. I can't. I, I and it's 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 bizarre to me to ever think about like going back to any other position that's like not remotely close to this. Like I, mm-hmm. you, I think about one of the one of the jobs that I used to have. I used to work at Whole Foods, and I'm like, I really loved that job, but I'm like, I. I don't know if like I could if I could get behind any other mission besides trans liberation. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's so interesting. So uh, I I am Lavender Rights Project. I'm gonna be here for a long time. I love I love that so much, Angel. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, folks, as a reminder, um, Angel uses they them pronouns and is the development associate at Lavender Rights Project. They love the rain, watching movies, and cooking. You can find out more at lavenderrightsproject.org, lavender with an E-R at the end. And um, yeah, there's there's all sorts of socials and things y'all can hop on. Lavender Rights Project is on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and maybe has a YouTube channel. We maybe. do. You can check out uh, all, of our, all of our videos that are on our Instagram are also uh, on our YouTube. Awesome. Um, so we have our, our clouder query for the week, um, in a, in a change up of events, would you like to ask the clouder query angel since they're your questions? I, we can ask, I, we can ask both. I sure would love to. Okay. Uh, just, just to put on folks' minds, uh, you know, during this beautiful black history month, you know, what are you doing to support black trans liberation in your everyday life? And what are some ways you are showing up to support black trans women and femmes? I love those questions. Um, So folks, I will tell you about next week. Um, We have Aquarius Funk is going to be joining us next week, which is super wonderful. And we're going to be discussing performance art and creative expression. Aquarius is a um, Black non-binary performer and a friend of mine. And I can't wait for you all to meet Aquarius. For community updates, I just want to put a reminder out to you all that um, next week is going to be our first Clouder Takeover. So I'll be hosting Jenniferful next week, but then the rest of the streams for February 28th and the first few days in March are actually going to be my friends in Jenner Meowster's Clouder from the Discord server, just the community. Like, yeah, I'm Jenner Meowster, but like the brand has like, I don't know. 17, 18, 19 contributors at this point. It's incredible. Um, and so my friends are going to be streaming to the channel so I can get caught up on admin tasks. So this is going to be a new, uh, once a month, there's going to be one week that I take off and it's keyed off of the fourth Monday. Um, so eventually we won't have a podcast on the fourth Monday, which also gives the editors and the content people uh, a down week to either catch up on other projects or have some downtime. So anyways, so the the new Clouder Takeover is going to be happening. Um, and 
it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. I mean, I, I'm like, oh no, I'm going to miss things. Um, yes. And the other thing that I will, that I will mention is um, this Thursday stream, my mom is going to be on the show with me um, and we're doing a tarot reading. So I think the first two hours I'm going to do something. I don't know if it's going to be memes or something else, but I'll do something for two hours and then mom will join us after the break. We might take the break a little bit later on Thursday so we can have time for that transition. But uh, yeah, we love mom. Yeah, we do. Yeah, Butch Week. So we're going to be doing a tarot reading for uh, the month of March. <laughs> I'm so excited to share that with you all. So yeah, exactly. So yes, do come back for that on Thursday. Um, if you're hearing this later, it uh, doesn't apply to you because it was yesterday. You can watch the VOD though and see the, the monthly reading. So yeah. Um, Angel, thanks for being on the show. This has been a delight. Thank you so much for having me. I, I truly couldn't have imagined a better Monday. Um, I had so much fun chatting with you. And yeah, I love talking about Lavender Rides Project. Um, and I love, yeah, I love talking to you. So this was a, it was a pleasure. Jennifer would like to thank our guests for being on this podcast. If you'd like to catch us live, join us on Mondays at twitch.tv forward slash gendermaster. Show notes will appear in the edited version of the show on Fridays on both YouTube and podcasting platforms. If you have a question you would like the host to answer or are gender diverse and would like to request an interview, please send an email to genderfulpodcast at gmail.com or sign up via the website at genderfulpodcast.com. As a gender diverse community, The Clatter wants to assure our listeners that we are prepared to moderate our spaces. We will get positive and negative feedback on these shows and topics, and we have a moderation team on our channels, socials, and Discord server ready to deal with this. Please join our Discord server at discord.gg forward slash meowster to meet the community and get a regular digest of solidarity resources. You can also support us with subscriptions on Patreon, following and reviewing us on your favorite podcasting platform are engaging with our posts and content on social media at genderfulpod and at gendermeowster. You can take a few moments to also rate the show. We will post any five-star reviews on our socials, so get creative. Mention a special interest of your own, a project you're working on, or even say hi to your comfort person in your review. What pawa? This show is made possible by volunteers, tips, and subscriptions. Shout out to the folks helping us coordinate guests, edit the podcast, moderate the live chat, and post on our socials. Artist credit for Jennifer. Jennifer's theme song is called Hope by Free Range Megs, aka Soma. The Gender Master logo was designed by That's Barnaby and edited with consent by Trans Griffin. Jennifer's pre-show is wrangled by Juice Tex. Genderful is edited and mixed by Trans Griffin and Alexis Vandom. Genderful's social media is managed by Queer to Help. Genderful is hosted by Atlas O. Phoenix and Gender Meowster. Genderful is the intellectual property of Gender Meowster. All rights reserved. Trans, Trans rights, rights are human, human rights. rights. That's right. right.